I don't even I don't even like sports. I know right now. I mean, I'm gonna go a step further. Let's go ahead and get the men all against me. I like cats better than dogs. <laughs> I didn't, I'm not up here trying to prove a point of manliness. I already opened with the appreciation for ugly manly hair and body odor, but I'm just letting you know, I, I just have never been able to play sports very well. I, I can't do it. So what I can do is I can talk a lot of trash and so I can make you think that I can play sports well. It was one of those days when my friend said, let's go. And so I had a, I had my skateboard. I was always in the skateboard. I had my skateboard with me, and, and I was wearing these, these shoes. They've come back out. There's these canvas vans. They were vans. Remember the, the they had the checkerboards on them. Remember the, remember those? Most people are saying, nodding your head, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The, the checkerboards, they came out in the 80s, and they've resurfaced in the last uh, five, six years, and they're awesome shoes, but I had those. It's important you know about those because my friends weren't wearing those. See, my friends were all wearing these basketball shoes. Now, this was the early 90s. This is when basketball shoes shoes were a whole different thing. Basketball shoes back then, they had this big pump in the front, the pumps, and, and you would pump it like that, and there would be air released all throughout there because they were going to play basketball. So they, I mean, they were stopping at the gas station on the way, like that, and running there, bouncing around with like zero gravity. It was pretty awesome, but I didn't have those. I had my skateboarding shoes on, my Vans, very little ankle support important in the story. <laughs> and I go and I start skateboarding and they start playing the game and about 10 minutes in I hear, Elijah, we need another player. I pretend like I don't hear it. <laughs> Elijah, we need another player. Oh, y'all don't want me to play. I can tell you, you do not want me to play. Yeah, come on, we need it. All right. You make a mistake. Because if I play, mm -mm. I didn't even know what to say. I'm not familiar with that. And so I go over there. And I gotta figure out a way to get through this game. Here's what I figured out about sports. If you stay clustered in the middle with everybody else and you don't make eye contact with the person with the ball, you're pretty safe. <laughs> But the other thing I quickly learned is those guys have a lot more stamina than I do. They're running back and forth and they like it. They're wearing me out. That's when I look up. I realize they're all over there. Except for one guy, he's over here, and he's got the ball, and he's throwing it to me. I'm middle of the court, he's, and the, it's that red dot, it's getting bigger. And I'm getting scared because I know in my lifetime, here's how this usually ends. This ends in me reaching out to catch that ball. And here's the deal, guys. Listen, we're on the same team. Why do you pass that ball so hard? <laughs> what are you trying to do? We are on the same team, man. I am right here. So you get the finger chance mm, like that, or it hits me in the head every time. So here's what I do. I reach up. Because I got these big monkey hands too. <laughs> and it, 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 it couldn't have went more beautifully for some reason. <laughs> I caught the ball <laughs> midair and it stopped right in my hand. It's like, what? <laughs> but the momentum of the ball, as I was standing just like this, caused my arm to go down. And I released the ball. It bounced. My other hand was positioned perfectly to receive the dribble, as they call it. <laughs> it was like a mo but the clouds broke away. <laughs> there was an angel spinning a ball on his finger. <laughs> The spirit of Michael Jordan was shining upon me. <laughs> and boom. It was like one of those moments. You 
ever had a day that goes so well or a moment that you can you can kind of feel your own, you can hear your own music, your own soundtrack. It's like you're in your own video. You know what I'm talking about? And so it was just, oh, it was, I mean, the music was, so I got you. I done told y'all. Oh, yeah. And I, I jumped up. I got to, I jumped in the air. I'm in the air. It's so beautiful. You can hear the crowd. But it wasn't actually crowd. It was, it was the guy eating chips, you know. <laughs> Now it was the lower bottom half of the net. <laughs> right? It didn't go in. I realized after I said it, I caused you to believe that it went in. It didn't go in, it just and the net just went like that. And the ball. And immediately my music video stopped. <laughs> The clouds, <laughs> and I descended from the sky <laughs> at a rapid pace. <laughs> the thing that first touched the ground <laughs> was the very point of my van's shoes oh. on my right foot. And I could, I could, I could hear and feel at the same time a <laughs> oh. You ever have something that happens and it makes the rest of your body just collapse? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> like that, and then all of a sudden I was just laying out on the ground. <laughs> I could feel my heart beating in my shoe. <laughs> I couldn't breathe because the wind had been knocked. <laughs> my friends were gathered around me giving me the noble advice that they always do whenever someone's out of breath. We all give the same advice. It goes like this. Just breathe. <laughs> breathe. Come on, man, just breathe. <laughs> I knew I had to do something. I stood up and I could feel it. Now, had I been like them and had a would have been that bad. But I didn't have the right kind of support for a game I wasn't supposed to be playing in the first place. <laughs> I had to drive home. I got home and I took my shoe off. When I took my shoe off, my foot immediately got bigger. <laughs> now this isn't good. So I peeled the sock off. I looked at my foot, and there were two toes that were significantly shorter than they used to be. This doesn't seem right. Now, they were fatter, but they were short. It's important you understand which toes these are. 
It wasn't that big, the big toe, you know, the big, kind of like that mafia toe. Like if they had voices, that would be the voice. You know what I'm talking about? Like, uh, oh, you come under my shoe. <laughs> a nice shoe, you stink it up. We worked hard to have <laughs> It wasn't that, it wasn't that toe. It wasn't that tall, you know, the tall, goofy toe, the one right next to the big toe, the one that, uh, like in Southern California. Where I live in Ventura, we have, it's a surfer community, and the guys talk like that big toe, like, oh, dude, check it out, where I point we go, man, look at that. It wasn't that toe. Skip all the way to the end, it wasn't that little pinky toe either. You know the pinky toe, I hate the pinky toe. That's not a real toe. <laughs> that's not real. That's not. I subscribe to the Christian belief system. In that belief system, there was a fall that happened at the beginning when Adam and Eve partook of a fruit they should not have had. I believe the toe was part of the curse that came along <laughs> with that action. <laughs> Because that doesn't, it doesn't even grow a real toenail on the, women, I've seen you paint that toenail with a toothpick. <laughs> and we are done. <laughs> Which toe do you always hit on something in the middle of the night? It's that toe. <laughs> and you shall have pain in childbirth and oh yeah, <laughs> no! <laughs> Keep me work by the sweat of my brow, but pay the toe. <laughs> no, it wasn't that one. It's those other two. Those other two. The ones I didn't mention. You know why? Because they don't have their own identity. <laughs> we don't appreciate those toes. We could care less about those toes. They're just there on the foot. They're just there. They could be one's toes stuck together. If you grew skin between the thing that's, that caused those two to be one, you wouldn't care. Those, as a matter of fact, when you spread your toes out on your foot, there are two toes that stick together. <laughs> These are the toes. They're like, mm-mm, mm-mm, oh, oh. Mm -hmm. Come on, don't they? Are we standing that right now? Those toes are homies, man. They are just the two of us. We can make those toes are not. Those are not homies. Those toes are tomies. Those are those. They're tomies. The tomies are short. Something's wrong because they're purple too. I think to myself, oh, this ain't good. I think I might have broken. Tomies. <laughs> I'm fairly sure I broke my Tomies. So someone told me, hey, listen, away. here's how you know if you broke your Tomies or if you have something broken. Listen, what you got to bend everything down, and if they if they will not bend down, then then you'll know. And so I was like, okay, I'll I'll, uh, I'll do that. So I was like, count on three, ready? One, two, three. All the other ones, oh, they bend down. Oh, dude, check that. The little piggy went, hey, they get, and they bend all down. But there were two toes that would not bow that day, my friends. <laughs> like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abed, my toe. <laughs> they would not bow. <laughs> if you don't get that joke. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, so I'm told you need to go to the go to the doctor, go to, go get it checked out. I don't like going to the doctor. I told you I was raised in the South, and in the South, in my family, we did not go to the doctor. Why? Because I had a Mexican nana that I grew up with. My Mexican nana, if 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 Alka Seltzer would not do it. If Pepto-Bismol would not do it, just give it time. <laughs> Mijo, you're gonna be okay. You're gonna, it was always like that. <laughs> Your grandpa had it like that. I did. I cochino. <laughs> so, 
so I, uh, I went to the emergency room. You been to the emergency room lately? <laughs> Even if you haven't, let's say 76 was the last year you went to the emergency room. <laughs> it's the exact same. <laughs> Nothing's changed. I go in there. I'm squeezing this in. We've got about five minutes left, so I'm squeezing this in here. I go and I sit down in the emergency room waiting room. It's packed. I sit down next to a gang member who's been shot in the leg. He's bleeding into a bucket. I don't know how much worse it has to get before they'll go see you now, but I sit down next to him because I was the only seat available. No one else wanted to sit next to him in case they came back to shoot him and finish him off. And I don't know if you've ever had to explain to a gang member has been shot in the leg and bleeding into a bucket, that you're not very good at basketball. <laughs> but I have. And there's no manly way to do it. Because everything I said sounded just like this. I was playing basketball and I really shoot it. I had shoes, and very fashionable shoes, but it was not the kind of sport that I needed for this game. I shouldn't have not even been playing this game. It's very excruciating. I know you think it's not because of the situation there, but it's very excruciating. There's no way. Fast forward in the story. I finally get to see the doctor. I call him Dr. Kilo Mabaka. He comes in and, and he says, uh, he says, okay, Mr. Kendall, let me see. <laughs> he's got a guy with him. I call him Junior, because Junior, he's wearing a white doctor's coat, but you can tell he hasn't really operated or worked on humans at this point. You know what I mean? He's just <laughs> he sees me, number three, on the chart. He's getting really excited. Turns out I did. I had broken tone. Oh, Mr. Kendall, your x-ray shows I had to take an x-ray. Listen, if you don't have something broken before you take the x-ray, it will be broken by the time. Okay, we're just going to have you uh, position it like, like that. And, that's what <laughs> and then why do they strip you down to just a robe only to put a big metal jacket on you and then they run out of the room? That's not reassuring. <laughs> so bad when he, and I said, oh, 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 doc, doc, you're gonna have to give me something for pain. He go, oh, Mr. Kendall, we got the perfect thing for you. <laughs> Pulls out the syringe. I hate shots. I hate needles. I know what you're thinking right now. I'll explain it later. But I hate needles. And, 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 and he's holding me, and Junior's holding my leg. And, and he gives me a shot right in the ball of my foot where like, these are my toes. Boom, like that, we're going, oh, <laughs> he goes to grab him. I said, we're going to have to let it sit in. Let's give it a few minutes. Let's let it sit in. My duck didn't know. I got perfect thing for you. He pulls out another syringe on the top of my foot. <laughs> The final instructions are to stay off my feet for four weeks. We negotiate to two weeks. The next day, I'm at home. I think it was probably the Vicodin that made me feel like it wasn't hurting me. But I'm thinking, yeah, yeah, I'm coming. I'm walking through the house, I'm walking on sunshine. Mm -hmm. I'm walking on sunshine. Ooh, yeah. I'm walking on sun. Now I'm just starting to jog up the stairs. Ooh, yeah. And don't it feel right at that part? <laughs> 
You know that one hallway closet door that's never closed all the way. I'm working on sunshine. Ooh, I'm working on sunshine. Oh yeah, I'm working on sunshine. Mm -hmm. And don't it feel and as if I had aimed to kick that door with only two toes. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> you guys are awesome.